So we are in the top eight of the Scapegoat Yu-Gi-Oh! King of Games tournament. And we are here with Subterror versus a Mysterious Deck. Pasta Mans versus R2. Pasta Man was the undefeated in Swiss. And R2 is actually, uh, he did not show for his first round, but won out. So he is uh, going to be trying for first place. And we have Subterror and a Mysterious Deck. We have the Hidden City that just got Guru and we're going to see a set four. And now we're going to see some enticing gameplay. Gearsu's effect will activate and he will think about it. We get Nemesis to negate. Guru will go face down. And we get There Can Only Be One. Pretty good combo, huh? <laughs> so, kind of a hindrance for the Orcus player, um, given that they can only control the one machine. Although Orcus does play more cards, and they could go into a Nightmare Phoenix. So, they're getting a draw. Off of the return, get two cards. Hopefully, to draw into something that will prevent all of these felon trap cards. So it's been going on for a long time. The six-round tournament. We just got into top eight. So a few more rounds. Everybody's having a good time, though. Everybody's doing good. And we see a Gearsu pass. Big rip to the There Can Only Be One Trap. But now we are going to see some Guru shenanigans by Guru flipping up and going all over the place. So in draw phase, so we're asking for a response. Let's see if... Uh... Yep. We are seeing the Pot of Duality activate. And there's Extravagance and Two Masterix. Is that how you say it? Uh, probably not Duality, I would assume. Extravagance is a very good pick. Get some draws for the following turn. We get the Guru Flip. Guru Effect will activate. If there's a response, that is fine. We get to search for, I would assume... Can you get the Trap or the, the Fiendus? Yeah. The Fiendus is going to be searched. And that's about it. We get a pass back to the opponent. And the Trap card is really hurting the Gearsu player. Uh, the Orcus player, rather. You can't really do too much with it on the field. You need another non-machine uh, monster to summon out and make a Nightmare Phoenix to pop it and try to go off. But if you don't have it, you don't have it. You gotta try to do what you gotta do. Let's see what you got. So we see another pass from Gear Suit. Extravagance for the draw two, vanishing six for cost.
I'm gonna set from the gear too. And that's about it. Can't really do too much with the there can only be one. You get the final battle. Face down, and it is now the sub terror turn. We're looking at six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? Eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven cards comparatively to the eight on the opponent's side of the field. So, sub terror has a two card advantage which is going to turn into a three card advantage pretty soon, I would assume. We're getting the Umasterix. Umasterix, right? What a weird name to say. Pretty cool. We're an hour seven. Crazy, huh? Seventh hour. Now Umasterix is coming out. up you potentially add a card Banishing the symbol skeleton is a very good card to banish. Uh, fortunately for Orcus, sometimes the cards being banished is fine. You can just recycle them back with Galatea. Uh, however, in this situation, not so fine since you have the there can only be one trap card, which is preventing the Orcus player from doing a lot. And this kind of position, once you get the uh, subterror player with Hidden City, Guru, and a bunch of set cards, it's more than likely game over, given how they have so much advantage. You really need the uh, monster to be off board or face down in order to use a lightning storm to take away all of the face down cards. However, there is a nemesis. Nemesis will negate it. So, that's about it. So we're banishing World Wand, use special symbol skeleton. Potentially thinking if we're going to negate with Nemesis, I would assume, or something like that. We get symbol. And on resolution, an effect will be activated, assuming last battle, or crackdown rather. See, this is pretty insane. We're stealing the opponent's monsters now. Reptile, Machine, and Dragon. All monsters that are fine to be on the field if there can only be one. We still have the face down Gearsu. And we're summoning another Gearsu. Gearsu will attempt to activate his effect. met with Ash Blossom. So we still know that he has the Nemesis in hand. His two, uh, three face down cards, two of which we don't know because we know Final Battle. And two other cards in hand. So 
going to battle phase. Guru is going to attack over the zero defense uh, Girsu, I presume. Or no, it's the other way around, the other turn. Uh, Girsu is attacking the symbol skeleton. He will let it happen. Thank you, Farron. I appreciate that. Certainly love to uh, make these tournaments and hope for everybody to participate in them. Hope to make some more YouTube content and more Twitch content. Certainly love doing that. But I appreciate your kind words. But uh, feel free to participate in all future tournaments and also all future giveaways. All on our Discord server and every form of social media. There's a giveaway on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everything. We're gonna flip back up the Mermatrix, whatever. I can't pronounce the subterra names. So I'm gonna call him Big Boy. So Big Boy will potentially be flipped back face up. And we will banish a card on the opponent's side of the field, one of the Gearsus. And probably go for some damage finally. Gearsu is uh, looking not so great. Orcus, rather. Final battle is activated. We're going to flip up one of the face downs. And banish a card. <laughs> Sounds good to me, dude. Always be a part of the sheep. Alright, so we're doing Pot of Duality. We have the Upstart Goblin, which will get you another draw. The Hidden City, which, you know, it's always good to have as backup. And the Trap, which was taken. So, that's good. Good stuff. One of these players may be the next King of Goats. Who will it be? I'm not sure. But the, uh, winner who gets to go to first place so the winner of top eight does get a colored name in their discord right and that'll be it right an issue in another game. What's the issue in that game? Does Nibiru trigger Cyber Dragon Nova's summon effect? That's a good question, right? That is a good question. To read both cards. So, Cyber Dragon Nova. It looks like uh, Subterra won game one while I'm looking up Cyber Dragon Nova. Cyber Dragon Nova is a once per turn. You can detach one material from this card and target one Cyber Dragon in your graveyard, special summon that target. Once per turn, quick effect, you can banish one Cyber Dragon from your hand or face up on the field from your monster zone. This card uh, gets 100 attack until the end phase of this turn. If this card in your possession is sent to the graveyard by your opponent's card effect, you can special summon one machine fusion monster from your extra deck. So that is the effect in question, correct? If this card is sent to the, if this card in your possession is sent to your graveyard by your opponent's card effect. So Nibiru. We can read Nibiru. You can tribute as many monsters on the field as possible, and if you do, discard from your hand, especially one Primal Beak token. So, if you are tributing a monster, 
it's still being sent to there to the graveyard and you're doing so via the effect of Nibiru. So I would consider that yes. I would I would consider Nova would trigger via the effect of Nibiru. Since it is tributing a monster, tributing is still sending to the graveyard. Um and it is because of a monster's effect that it's going to the graveyard. So that's what I would say. I hope that answers the question, and I hope that is correct. <laughs> Starting off, Orcus is trying to do their combo with Machina. So Machina is the new type of engine that Orcus are starting to use. Um, they came out pretty recently and a, ma a good majority of the Orcus decks play this variant because it allows you to combo off a little more. As far as I remember, there's like a little variance in play. As opposed to just playing, you know, pure or a regular build. But uh, Machina is pretty good. So now we have an extra card on the field for the Scrap Wyvern combo, which is pretty good. So assuming he didn't hard open uh, Golem, this will be a pretty good turn for him. We see him trying to go off. I'm wondering if we're going to see Needle Fiber here. So Fortress's effect for any old veteran Yu-Gi-Oh players, you can pretty much just discard a big old level whatever machine monster from your hand to special summon fortress from your graveyard pretty good card uh, usually when you opened it you could just discard it in another machine come it onto the field but if it's in your graveyard you can still just dis uh, discard a high level machine and bring it back out but uh it looks like nightmare is a seven what does this require an eight or more so that was an illegal action you can't really do that Good thing it was caught, though. So 
sort of got the effect just one level up, but that's fine. So we're trying to see what we can do here. Um, however, I don't really see too much of an avenue of play. The impermanence hurt pretty much. There is one kind of decent avenue of play. Um, and that's if he does play one card in his extra deck. But who knows. Uh, I know technically since I could just check his deck list, but let's see if we can see that line of play. So going for a link two or link three. be able to activate and summon because we do have world one grave so that is also pretty good so we do get the monster reborn that's pretty interesting so we do get to summon one card back which I assume is Recycler, right? Hmm. So since he used one earlier in the turn, he cannot use the second copy. So he's pretty much stuck in the spot where he has to pass. We're seeing Guru attack the Jet Synchron. Presumably, hopefully, there's a last battle face down for the Sub Terror player to put it back face down. Or utilize the effect, rather. Give a Cult by the Grave. And it's going to target the skeleton, so we cannot utilize that. And now we're going to Monster Reborn, or I would assume Scrap Recycler to try to get a plus off of that. Oh, 
we're actually going for Scrap Wyvern. It's pretty interesting we didn't save the Call by the Grave for the monster knowing that we had the face down successor to banish for it. We do have Crackdown to take the monster too, so that's also pretty good. Utilizing Wands effect to special a banished uh, skeleton, and now we can have access to Link Threes or more Link Twos, right? And if this goes to the graveyard, you can shuffle one card into the deck, which would be pretty good to get Guru off of the board. Which we get the Solemn Judgment. Pretty unfortunate for the Marcus player. However, we do get the... Bounce back, yep. We're in a very simplified game state now. Where there's only a Scrap Wyvern on the field, a Crackdown, and one card in the opponent's hand. So pretty, uh, pretty simplified, but the following turn we do get the Skeleton Banished to get... We can't really get Galatea back actually, so we're pretty down. Uh, we get Guru, <laughs> one of the best cards to see, and just in case you don't want Guru, you get either can only be one, which I think Guru is the correct choice. Yep. So pretty good, pretty good. Can't really do much with the Wyvern currently, however, we do have Guru to do some damage. Have a negated Galatea, and we have Simple Skeleton that can't really do too much. We have the Reborn that is pretty good. Reborn will target Metal. Metal comes out as a 2800 beater. the effects which I'm not familiar with because I don't really know what the Machina cards do too much but he is going to reveal three cards adding one random to his deck and it looks like he got the scrap recycler to send pretty good looks like it's gonna be a good back and forth between both players Nightmare is now in the graveyard, which we can now use the Nightmare and also the Simple Skeleton. So we've got a lot of resources now from the Orcus player. We have a second Scrap Wyvern. That is pretty interesting. We're going to game three now. Very close games both times, huh? Pretty good. very interesting that he plays a second copy of Scrap Wyvern. Most people would play one, right? But, second one. Game in clutch. The, for the 1% uh, chance that you needed the second Scrap Wyvern. <laughs>
So we're going into game three. Right? Pretty good stuff. And for a battle between Orcist and Subterror, it is only 30 minutes in so far, so it's not too bad. We're assuming the Subterror player is going to go first, given they want to ideally set Guru past 5. Something to that regard. Prohibition. That is a card. What are we prohibiting? Scrap Recycler. So we got no Wombo combos with the Scrap Combo. We do still have a issue with Gearsu. We are setting Guru and potentially one to three cards. We have two. Is the last one to set? Nope. So we have potentially one of the higher leveled monsters, we have another Guru, a Fiendus, or something that we couldn't just use. Uh, there can only be one very dangerous card for the opponent. So a card that would be very good right now would be Lightning Storm. If we see that drop, it just might be game. It is Cosmic Cyclone that we see, pretty similar. He's going for the unknown back row, which would indicate he does not really care about the rest of these cards. So let's see what's going on here. We have the Gearsu. Gearsu will still send to the graveyard and he can make a token if he so chooses. Uh, well, actually he can't make a token because there can only be one, right? However, Prohibition stops and Scrap Recycler, so that's not really mattering right now. The only thing is the there can only be one and we do see the second Cosmic Cyclone. And are we gonna see, nope, no Fiendus. So we're getting rid of that. Pretty good. Now we're gonna see the token effect. Which will automatically put Pasta Man into uh, Galati territory. So this is not looking too hot for Guru. We have the Banish on Nightmare to send one card into the grave. The target will be the Galati. That is fine. We're sending one card to the graveyard, assuming it's either World Wand or Symbol Skeleton. World Wand for the, uh, the Nightmare to come back. Pretty good. We are attempting to activate Gal to set one card from the deck, either the field spell or crescendo. And judging by what we have currently, it might even be better to get Crescendo just to stop your opponent from doing anything, but we're just going to go Vavel for future resource management, which is also pretty good. I figure in a simplified game state though, you might want the Crescendo just to uh, say no to your opponent. Because ideally you could just go you know, do a few plays, get rid of the face down card, attack over the token, and you're pretty much fine. I'm going to send the sub terror uh, guru to the graveyard, which will leave a token on the board. After we wipe the token, we only have three cards from our opponent on his following turn. Two will be in his hand that we don't know about, and the prohibition is still stopping the Scrap Recycler from being used. Now we are linking off, which will leave Nightmare in the Graveyard to send Symbol Skeleton the following turn to get a card back for Interruption, which is also great. We have the Galati and a set card, which could be Crescendo, and we're passing turn. And I'm, gonna, I'm sure we're going to see some chains in the graveyard from Orcus, depending. 
in the draw phase we're banishing the Orcus Nightmare. Sending Symbol Skeleton, I'm sure. On resolution, we're going to see a card be activated. Called by the Grave. Ding is being targeted. We're chaining the Symbol Skeleton. Ding will come out now, opting to use its effect to either attach as a material or send the prohibition to the graveyard. And it looks like we're going to attach to give protection to the Galaxy. <laughs> Ding Gear soon, Galaxy. Interesting how we're not putting it in the uh, zone right here to give Galaxy the protection, though. And we do see another face down card, which I'm sure will end up going to the graveyard. And we also see Orchestrator Return drawing two more cards from the deck. I think this is it. I think this is a blowout. Sadly enough, the game three. There's too much advantage on one side, and Orcus has a lot of resources engraved for management. That is it. That is the Mech Knight Gearsu with Galatee and Graveyard Ding Gearsu. That is 26, 18, and 18, 36, and 26. That is a lot of damage. There's enough resources to even OTK. So. That is a lot of resources for Orcus to work with. The Boral Sword Dragon. That's great. We're going to see a Banish Symbol Skeleton for a card. We also do get a World Wand. I'm assuming the Face Down Monster. That's good. And then I'm assuming. World 1 will potentially be banished to special summon a symbol skeleton and they're going to crash over the token. Ding will attack and Boral will get two swings in which would be 5600 I assume and he's going for the nightmare for the disrespect. What time is the next round? The next round will probably be 610 or so depending. And we do see Orcus win, so that is it. That is the top 8 match for this round. It was Orcus versus Subterra, and Orcus has won. So thank you guys for watching that duel. I appreciate it, and we'll go for the top 4 match next, followed by a playoff for 3rd and 1st and 2nd. So thank you guys for watching that.